Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1104. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great Excel example in this video with lots of cool tricks all combined into one formula. However, I want to talk about a free giveaway. I've never done a free giveaway, but I have a bunch of extra Excel 2010 Slain Excel Dragon DVDs. I have 25 of them that I want to give away. And here's what you have to do. First 25 people to watch, comment, and like, or thumbs up, right? This interview video and subscribe to Excel TV. There's the name of the video. There's the link. It's in the uh, sh below this video. You can click on the link. But if you go there, leave a comment, uh, like it, and subscribe to Excel TV. Then notice the big then. Send your address. Looks like I, as you guys all know, I can't spell or type. <laughs> Send your address to ExcelIsFun at gmail.com. And I'll go and check and see if you uh, did all this. The first 25 people, I'll just uh, mail you one of these uh, DVDs. All right, here we go. In this interview, at the 46, 49 minute mark, I did a formula that was based on a data set. And it did AND and OR criteria. But in that video, we had actual serial number dates here and the criteria was set up as serial number dates. So this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Look at this. I need a formula that I can copy down and over. And for this cell right here, it actually has to get the whole month, January 2014, for sales rep in this column, Datascopic, Grantham, or Option Explicit. So here's the deal. We're going to have to, if we're looking through serial numbers, figure out how to deal with this data criteria mismatch. That's text. That's a year. We can't directly match these against these serial numbers. Not only that, but if we figure out how to get a date from this criteria input, we're going to have to get the beginning of the month, the end of the month, and then look through here and say, hey, date, are you bigger than the beginning of the month and less than the end of the month? And since that's two AND criteria, we're then going to have to match it with one, two, three, OR criteria. So let's build this one bit at a time. The first problem is if I have a formula that I'm copying down and over, somehow when I'm in this cell, this cell, and this cell, I, all need to, I always need to get this year. Not only that, but over in this column, I need 2014. So in essence, I need the formula to do this, right? But when I copy it down, this all needs to be 2015. Well, we're going to use a lookup last concept. Now, these are numbers. And as I copy down, if I had an expandable range, right, in any one of these cells, there's nothing here, but there's a number there. So if I looked up the last one, it would get this in all these cells. When I finally get to a new cell in an expandable range, boom, I have a number that I can look up last. I'm going to use approximate match lookup to look up the last. And I'm using lookup, not VLOOKUP or match or anything. Now, the trick to approximate match getting the last value when it's a number is to give the lookup value some big number. Now, I'm dealing with years here. And I'm never going to have a year greater than 10,000. So I'm just going to go easy. I'm never greater than 10,000. So my lookup value is going to be bigger than any of the numbers I'm ever going to look up. That way, it always gets the last one. The lookup vector. Now I have to think about this. I'm copying this down and over. And I'm going to need an expandable range. So I'll type E8 to E8. The first one, that 2014, I'm going to put my cursor there and hit F where it's locked in all directions. But this second E8, since it's expandable, this way I need it locked on the E. But when I copy down, the 8 needs to be free to move to 9, 10, 11. So I hit F4 one, two, three times. And guess what? That little magical formula, look up last number. Actually, watch this. I'm going to. Highlight F2 and then Control Enter to populate that formula all the way through. And just like that, I've looked up the last with an expandable range. Now, the next part is how do I get a month number? Because ultimately, I'm going to have to, from these, create a date using the date function. These years will work in the date function, but I need a month. So I'm going to use this month trick. If I take January, 
and lock it one, two, three times with the F4 column, but not the row. And ampersand it to a 1. Check this out. It's expecting a serial number, but if I F9, that's text. But for some reason, month is perfectly programmed to interpret that correctly, Control-Z. So if I were to highlight F2, Control-Enter to populate that all the way down, boom, that is getting me my month number. Now watch this. I'm going to copy this little formula a bit. Now I'm going to see if I can get the first of the month in all of the right cells, because ultimately we're going to need that, the first and the end of the month in our formula, using date. All right, so there's the year, comma, the month, control V, comma, for day. It's easy, because every month has the same first day one. So that will work, control enter. If I highlight all the way down, F2, Control Enter. That F2, when everything's highlighted, Control Enter populates the formula all the way through. And boom, I have the correct first day of the month. Now, how would I get the end? Well, check this out. I'm going to highlight this, actually clear all, and copy this, because this formula element will give me the first. And I'm going to need that as criteria inside my sum if. So I'm going to copy load it up on the clipboard over here. Now I can use this same formula element for end of the month. End of the month, well, it, whatever the start date is, it just needs to know which month to go to the end. Comma for this month right here. 0 says the end of this month. 1 would give me the end of next month. Minus 1 would give me the end of the previous month. But boom, I want 0. And let's see, I should just keep them highlighted. F2, Control Enter. Whoa, that's perfect. That's given me the end of the month in the proper position. Now, just to keep the cell clear as we build our sum ifs for me, I'm going to copy this, Control C. So now I have over here my two criteria, first of the month, end of the month. So when I get to those bits that I need, I'll copy them from the clipboard. Now, sum ifs. Actually, I'm going to highlight this Control Asterisk to highlight the whole table. And I want to name this column Date Sales Rep Unit. So Control Shift F3. And I'm going to say Not Left Column, because that would name every row the date. That would be ridiculous. I just want the top. Click OK. So now if I go up to the Name box and highlight Date, just like that, I got it. If I go up to the Name box and highlight Units, boom. So that'll be easier to build the formula. Actually, in this interview, Jordan said, you know, making formulas easier to understand is important, and using named ranges is one way to do that. Why? Because when you read the formula, click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. Oh, I can see clearly for some range, I'm adding units, comma, criteria range. How about date? comma, notice when I type it out, I have the choice of selecting from the dog tag drop down. Or I, if I type the whole thing, I can see that it is orange over here. That will work, comma. And now we need greater than or equal to the first of the month. So in double quotes, greater than or equal to in double quotes, and the join symbol. And now I come over here and boop. Right? So for criteria 1, F9, you can see, sure enough, it's got greater than or equal to the serial number for the first of the month, Control-Z. Now, that's criteria range 1 and criteria 1. I come to the end very carefully with my IB and I type a comma, and I see criteria range, date, comma, the criteria 2 right here less than or equal to in double quotes and join it to. And now I come over here and get my end of month. All right, so there's criteria 2. F9, sure enough, less than or equal to the serial number for the uh, date at the end of the month, Control-Z. Comma. Now, actually, we can enter this right here. This will give me the total just for the whole month. Control or close parentheses, Control Enter, Control Shift tilde to wipe away that number formatting. F2, Control Enter. 
control shift tilde. It looks like that date is persisting. That's not what I want. That's the total for every month, which would be fine in some other situation. But I need the total for these three sales rep in this column, these three sales rep in this column. In essence, I'm going through and saying uh, s record is the sales rep datascopic or Grantham or options explicit. F2, so check this out. We can simply come, and this is what's amazing about sum ifs and count ifs and average ifs and sum if uh, with, uh, without the s, count if, et cetera. I can add or criteria. So right at the end, I'm going to type a comma. I see my criteria range, control shift down arrow, control backspace. There's the criteria range three. I see my I-beam cursor, comma, and now I simply highlight one, two, three. Hit F4 once and twice, so it's locked when I copy it down, but not when I copy over to the side. Now, that's three different criteria in a single criteria and argument. So when you put more than one item into a criteria argument, you're doing OR criteria. And since it's three items, that means the sum ifs will spit out three different answers. In essence, I'm saying January 2014 and Datascopic, or January 2014 and Grantham, or January 2014 and Option Explicit. When I hit F9, there's the three answers. Now, those three answers are coming from an array operation. Right here, this is a function argument array operation. Some formulas are going to have trouble understanding that. If I put it inside of sum, this sum argument, boom, right there, number one, it will not understand that array created by the function argument array operation unless you use control shift enter so it's an argument driven decision do you use control shift enter or not here we'd have to i don't want to so i'm going to type a p and put it in some product the array argument in this sum product function is programmed to handle array operations without control shift enter so we simply close parentheses and i'm going to i'm going to use control enter to populate it all the way down Ooh, it looks like I have some problem. No problem. I'm going to come to the last cell and hit F2. And it looks like I have forgotten to properly highlight. So I'm going to come back to the original cell. This range right here, I'm not sure why it didn't get sales rep. Let's highlight this. And one way to highlight it is to uh, click on the argument. Boop. Screen tip. And um, let's try sales. And see, there it is. For some reason, I didn't get it. I didn't catch what I did earlier. But I'm going to double click or hit Tab. Now, Control-Enter. And let's try F2, Control-Enter. And sure enough, now if I come to the last cell and hit F2, I'm looking at the range finder to make sure that all of the ranges are in place. And it looks like it worked. So that is a much wilder and more complicated situation that we were put into and a much more complicated formula. We had to do look up last, right? We had to do this month trick from text to a month number. And then we had to use the date and end of month. All right, uh, get your free. It's to Excel 2010 Slain Excel Dragons DVD. Even if you just want it for your collection and you're on to 2013, first 25 to watch, comment, and like, and subscribe to Excel TV, and then send me your address. I will even incur the cost to mail it to you for free. Uh, and if you want to see the original example with serial numbers, it's at 4649 in that video. All right, we'll see you next video.